All right. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to Modern Sales Power Hour. We have a absolutely fantastic guest here today, uh, Connor Fee, CRO at Shortcut, previously Clubhouse, makers of delightful uh, issue tracking and engineering management software. Uh, more on that in a hot second here. And um, but uh, we'll wait for folks to kind of trickle in here. So, so Connor, um, we were talking about this off, uh, you know, offline in the green room, if you will. Um, you have been living out of Airbnbs for a year. How has that been? Uh, how has that been treating you? And uh, and when are you going to come to your senses and stop doing it? Um, how's that been treating us? Uh, you know, it's, there's a couple of other folks at Shortcut actually that. Uh, there's a channel called the Nomads channel, and we're not we're not the only ones actually on this <laughs> hilarious. Uh, the, the the most interesting fact is uh, we bought a car. We got seventeen thousand miles on the car. We did you know it had zero when we started. Um, so we've now That's crossed the country. We've crossed the country three times. So we drove from San Francisco to Raleigh, back to uh, Napa, and we're now back in Atlanta. So we've, <laughs> we've, we've doubled back a couple of times. Um, what we've got, it was just a mapping yeah. error. Like we, we, we did our itinerary <laughs> and, and Google Maps like got confused. And then we we're just, why are we, hey, honey, why are we driving back and forth across this, the country so much? I don't know. Google. We were Well, her office was supposed to open in September. Uh, and so oh. originally, like our plan was to be back. And then that got thrown out. Um, so, I mean, we, 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 a year in, you know, there's like some things we're good at. There's some things we're not good at. Um, I think we're both ready for some stability. I think we... The plan is to go back to San Francisco. Everyone keeps asking us, like, oh, are you scouting places? Have you figured out where you want to live? And we're like, well, we like San Francisco in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so the plan is to go back. I think we'll probably end up back there in, my guess would be like March, April or February, March, April, somewhere in there. Amazing. Um, we want to try okay. to take advantage of ski season before we go all the way back. So. Yeah, for sure. Actually, that's something I need to I need to note down um, that I'll email you about offline about uh, Mammoth. Although you your folks are in Salt Lake City, so or sorry Park City, so I don't know never... if you need to like go check out other other ski spots. Um, cool. Well, so let's um let's get into it here. Thanks everybody for joining um, for another episode of uh, of Modern Sales Power Hour. Um, Super pumped to have everybody here today, you know, to tackle your your hardest questions, your hardest sales sales operations, sales leadership, sales strategy questions. We have an amazing uh, participant here today to 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 get into that. Um, so just for people who are are like this is this user interface is not this is not Zoom. What's going on here? Uh, this is Goldcast. One of the things that this is really um, Power Hour is designed to be is like super 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 interactive. So you can see there's a little Q A Q and A tab there. See it says Q and A. Use that because the whole point of this is for me and Connor to answer your your kind of most annoying stickiest questions right now. We'll get into some of the things that Connor is most expert at um, aside from fleece vests. But um, but uh, but please do ask uh, ask questions. That's literally what we're here to do. Is like get into these get into your sticky topics. Um, so for folks who are not familiar, um, modern uh, power hour is put on by by MSP. MSP is the nation's largest revenue leadership community for sales management, sales and revenue operations, sales development, and related disciplines. The, the whole purpose of the community is to create an environment for our 25,000 growing members to answer questions they'd struggle to answer on their own uh, and help them see around corners they may not know about. This event is part of the way that we do that, <laughs> right? Um, and so the way that we do this is through real, like, amazing different um, you know, uh, events and things. We do virtual experiences of which this is one, but we all do digital panels, master classes, um things like that we have a robust online forum uh google group and then of course we do in-person experiences we used to do in-person experiences we will start doing in-person experiences again here shortly um but that's what we do with msp it's absolutely fantastic so before we get started um the whole idea here is that this is all about this is not about talking heads, you know, opining on X, Y, Z. This is about actually answering tactical specific questions. The good news is, is that nobody here has a shortage of opinions on tactical questions. So that's really fantastic. Uh, and so what we want to do here is to answer, you know, answer your thorniest questions. We have fun ones that were kind of provided ahead of time, but people can also ask them live as well. And so the good news is, is that we have Connor here 
so you actually you guys can get some actual good answers as opposed to the ones that you normally get from me um connor you want to give folks a little bit of a rundown of what you're up to recently what you did the time before that and the time before that and why and maybe why they should they should consider listening to you yeah i mean i wouldn't listen to me right like i think the first piece of advice i would give like take everything i say and like i don't know check it in wikipedia or something um <laughs> you know uh, hi i'm connor uh i'm the cro at shortcut um if you if you if you may have heard of us at one point we were called clubhouse there was another company they called clubhouse that got showed up there was a whole thing um whole not thing. called shortcut if you hate jira and you're forced to use it check out shortcut that's my like two second pitch um Prior to Shortcut, uh, I was at a company called Clearbit. We did like data enrichment for most modern sales and marketing teams. I'm sure folks have heard of that. Um, I've done everything from- I, I worked uh, at Clearbit. You may have heard of it. Uh. Oh, that was not <laughs> Screw you. No, no. That's that's why I'm like, everybody knows Clearbit. Duh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Come sure. Uh, I, well, I, now, don't how, I don't know how many else I say systems now, I have. I feel- I don't know how many different systems of mine are like being enriched by Clearbit right now, but like it's it's like more than two. <laughs> the, the, well, so the funny thing about this is the re- like it's a little bit of a tangent, but the funny thing about this is my team always goes like, "Oh yeah, we can get that data from Clearbit," and I was like, "Yeah," and they're like, "That'll be great, right?" And I'm like, eh, "Data quality, like it's like everyone always says this assumption that these systems are perfect," and I'm like, "You just gotta go in and assuming it's like eighty percent right. If you assume it's eighty percent right, you'll be very happy. You'll be fine. Yeah, it's up. like exactly. as long as the downstream process has tolerances where it doesn't have to be perfect, you'll be just fine. I mean, we used to say we used to say this all the time at Clearbit. If you are buying a data vendor for one data point and you need high levels of accuracy, you are going to be unhappy no matter who you buy it from." Right. Like the classic like, example is people are like, oh, I want employee counts so we can route it to enterprise versus SMB. And the answer is like, great, you can get it, but it's never going to be perfect no matter who you buy it from. And you could watch customers with that use case flip through three vendors every three years. Like you could, no, you could set your watch to when they'd show back up, basically. <laughs> right, exactly. But anyway, okay, so you're at Clearbit and then before Clearbit, you were doing... Uh, I did, I've done a couple different things in my life. I uh, worked at a company to help product managers uh, collect data for to make product decisions. I've did, I sold and did marketing and data storage uh, way back in the day. And I did some consulting stuff. I'm an engineer by training. Uh, I was an engineer coming out of college and sort of accidentally found my way fast backwards into sales and marketing. Well, and then the thing you're leaving out, though, is that um, you also worked at Winning by Designs, which is oh, yeah. not a, I mean, <laughs> kind of a big deal, right? Like when you think about, uh, organizations that are advancing the craft of of modern sales, winning by designs is obviously way up there. Uh, Jocko and team do amazing publishing, and also I don't know how Jocko yeah. can write backwards with his left hand on, you know, on his on his whiteboarding thing or whatever. But like, how how long you how long were you there and like consulting for different uh, sales works? Uh, I was there for about eighteen months. Uh, we were an early, nice. so that's an interesting story because we were an early client. Um, I mean, we were clients when it was, there were three of them. It was Jocko, Dom, and uh, Dan, um, no. who were all quite brilliant. Um, and so we were a client of their, like, you know, their 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 coaching and training business. Yep. Um, and Jocko, when I was leaving the company that at the t- I was at the time, Jocko said, hey, I want to build out more of a consulting business. You've got a consulting yep. background. Do you want to, like, help me build this out? And that was actually a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the only reason I left is that one of my clients, I mean, Clearbit was one of my clients at the time. And yep. Clearbit, you know, sort of made an offer that was hard to say no to. Um, yep. And it turns out that I like being an operator. I like being in the mix. Um, yep. But when when I have like the thorniest question on how do I think about like how this thing is changing the sales process? This yep. is not a plug for other people. But like when I when I'm really stumped, I call Jocko. Yeah, like, that, that guy just has thought through all of it in a he's way. Mad scientist. He, by the way. He's also an engineer turned sales guy. So yeah, he thinks about pattern. the world a little bit. Yeah, there, there's a pattern here. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, when I th- when I think about people that I need to like help me debug some sort of sales motion or whatever, it's like it's like Jocko or Jeremy Donovan or, you know, Phil. Oh, I love right? that guy. Love him. Yeah. He's just up the street. He's in Atlanta now. Or I guess he might not. No, he, he, he works for sales, sales law, but he lives in yeah. he lives in New York. But um, yeah. but yeah, so as as everyone can kind of tell, uh Connor's a huge sales nerd, just like all of us. One of us one of us and um and i'm super pumped to have him um have him hanging out today so i think the first thing i want to talk about one of the questions that was kind of uh asked earlier is um you know clearbit sold to a 
I, I want to say marketing operations, sales operations were probably the primary personas you guys were interacting with. Yep. And so now at Shortcut, you guys are selling to like, I imagine that the VPE is probably like, there's probably, obviously there's a self-serve component to it, but probably the ultimate decision maker, or at least in, maybe in organizations who are like, F this Jira thing, I'm fucking done, <laughs> right? Like that, per the person you're talking to is like a VPE or an engineering manager, or whatever. Like what's like, what are the big changes there in terms of like selling to that persona? Um, so it's, it's, it's not quite as simple as moving from like, manager of marketing operations or director of marketing operations to, to VPE. In fact, okay. what we find, what's interesting about, um, I mean, just, just to like the space a little bit, what's interesting about this is, so the end user has a lot more power than I've ever been used to experiencing. So if you, you and I think about in, in, in developer tools, yeah, totally. in, in developer tools, right. Yep. Or, or anything sort of supporting the development ecosystem. Right. So, yep. um, I mean, dog, I, we, we literally CI. have stories of engineers who will quit when they're going to change from Jira to something else or something else to Jira. Like they're that, mm -hmm. it, it, it affects like their daily life that much that there's a lot of like, there's a lot of opinions there. Um, sure. What's interesting is that we will find that oftentimes the driver for change is not the VP or whoever. It's a small group of, of individuals within the org that are unhappy with the tools that they're using. And mm -hmm. they'll go out and be like, we tested these three. We really like this one. We've now got two teams on it. Hey, VPE, we need you to bless this. Right. And it's not top, it's not tops down. At all. Mm -hmm. And and engineering products, whatever it is, is like more than happy to say, great, whatever. As long as it makes the workflows work, like we're happy with it, um, mm -hmm. which is very different than we have to think about in sales and marketing. So if a salesperson comes to me and says, I don't want to use Salesforce, I'm like, I scratched too that. bad. Right. Like yeah, you can, you can put a layer on top of it that'll make your life better. But like, yeah, like your opinion doesn't matter here. We're not going to change anything. Um, like, sorry, so why aren't you on a customer call right now? What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so that's actually very interesting. Um, but I, I will say that the, 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 how the buyers differ. So because you're talking often to a buyer or you're talking more often, sales is more frequently conversing with folks that are maybe a little bit more junior um, and more on the developer side, they're not as sophisticated a buyer. And I don't mean sophisticated, like smart or not smart. No, they're I just very mean, like, smart. They just don't buy shit a lot. Things as yeah. opposed to this is the second one I'm buying sort of thing. Um, right. And so we find ourselves doing folks sort of bifurcate into two groups, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. There are folks that are very... I'm going to try it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to fill it out. My team and I are going to test it. I don't ever want to talk to you. The only reason I want to talk to you is because I have an integration question or a setup question or a configuration question. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second animal is folks that are like, you know, call it 40, 50, up to 100 seats that are like, yeah, we're not going to flip 100 in Jira's overnight. We, we, what does an evaluation look like to, to teach mm -hmm. us, right? Like the, the common request we get is like, well, we need our trial extended. And then it's our job to say like, oh, have, have you evaluated this before? Have you thought about it? What are the metrics for success? And mm -hmm. a lot of times in a very non-defensive, and this is one thing I really like about the development team, development community, is that they get very, un they're not defensive at all about not knowing. They're just like, I don't know, we've thought about that. Like, can you help? Um, and that's where right. like, we get it's to like, transition to be much like more a reality, A reality-based conversation as opposed to like maybe a defensive-based conversation where it's just like, yeah, because like that can be tough in disco sometimes when you're like yep. doing discovery with somebody who like doesn't want to admit. I mean, this is the thing that I so with Atrium, of course, like we sell to to sales leaders who are, of course, the worst. No, just kidding. Wait, the worst. Wait, <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's like Shiny the Spider Man. It, it's the Spider Man. It's the Spider Man meme, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> did you just call yourself the worst? Wait, is this? Are um, you doing disco on me, or am I doing disco on you? I can't remember. Wait, who's getting like, this call? Who's, yeah, exactly. Who, who? It's the battle of the talk ratios. Um, yeah, the. Um, I think what can happen. This is why one of the things that at Atrium is like we we really 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 focus on making sure that we do one on one disco and don't do any group disco, no group calls, because yeah. like nobody wants to admit right that they've got this issue or that issue in front of um in front of other folks, and and it sounds and so like when we do it one on one right like we're talking with an SDR manager or whatever like oh cool like you know what are your challenges around like measuring rep performance and. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, like, I have no metrics. And, like, I honestly, no one's, like, trained me how to do that. But, like, if they're sitting in there with, like, their boss or whatever, yep. they're going to be like, yeah. hey, I don't know how to do my job, right? Now, the reality is that they don't know how to do their job and they need help and they need support. But, like, it, it's just kind of like, uh... And it sounds like what I'm hearing from you is like there's just kind of more intellectual honesty there. Where it's like, yeah, I guess what should we be paying attention to, like when evaluating shortcut versus versus you know moving off of Jira or whatever. I mean, that, I that's we're, interesting. We're in we're in an advantaged position because mm -hmm. of the PLG nature of our business. Yeah. That 
most of the folks that we're talking to have some inkling to do something. And to that end, the, you know, we're not doing at our price point at our current motion, we're not doing a lot of outbound. And so yep. as a result, like we're conversing with people who, who, who want to talk to us, who are trying to figure this thing out. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, they tend to be, it tends to be a really good question. I mean, the other thing I'll say here is like, again, really big plug for Jacqueline and the winning by design team, but like, we're pretty big sticklers about the, like, you got to ask a situational question to earn the right to ask a pain question, to earn the right to ask a impact question, to earn the right to ask a critical event question. And if you do those effectively, you just, even among developers who like probably didn't want to get on the phone with us in the first place, like they are, you just watch mm. them open up as you've earned the right to ask those more complicated questions. You don't get to roll in and be like, so when is it you want this implemented? Like that's not a right. thing, right? You've got to, you've got to right. build that. But if you build that effectively, they'll be really honest and really direct and really helpful for you. If, yeah. That's, that's super fascinating. Um, what is the, um, what, what is the, if you can recall off the top of your head, um, the publication in which that is the the winning by design methodology that you just described is published in, that would be great for us to throw in the chat. But I think what I'm hearing there is like this is the other thing that's really fascinating with us. When we, like we sell to sales organizations, so sales managers, sales operations, sales leaders, whatever. And so like it's one of those things where like you kind of walk into a singles bar and everyone's like, hey, <laughs> we know we know why we're here, right? Um, and and it's like same sort of situation where it's like, hey, well we thought like I'm gonna set an agenda literally you like it's like meta you're like i'm gonna set an agenda okay great set an agenda great and then it's like hey we're gonna do some disco and they're like okay sounds good yeah that's what you're supposed yeah. to do and i'm and i'm here for it right because like we know why we're here um and so what can what's kind of fascinating there is like everybody knows the game that's being played there and so the aes can kind of like i don't want to say like run fast and loose but like what they can do is they can just everybody kind of knows what's going on so they don't have to be as ornate about it as what you're describing. But sure. I would imagine in a situation where you have less sophisticated buyers or people who are not familiar with like the kabuki theater of sales, then you have to really do that well. Right. Yeah, and well, so actually, the... can you give an example of what you were like the the example of like of the the situation, the situation question versus the pain question da, 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 yeah, how that so, so, works out? Right. So, OK. Oh man, this is some serious like on the spot shit now. By the way, so just, like when I do this your badly, question, just when just I get do this badly, Jocko, in, in, in Guru, <laughs> Jocko's gonna be all over me. So okay, so if we were doing this and you were like um, you know, here I'm a VP, I'm a VP. Yeah, I was gonna say you're like a, a senior engineering manager, right? Yep. I would say like I would say I would want to ask a situational question with with context. So I would say, oh, I you know I saw you signed up uh, last week. You've got yep. uh, four folks into the tool um, and it looks like you've got about 15 people on the engineering org. Am I getting that right? Got it. Where right, it, so it's so literally just like, it's literally just fact-based. It's like, hey, it's I was just on fact -based. I, it's a situational question. Just I, saw, I saw that. Yeah, that's right, Connor. Um, although we're going to be hiring 10 more engineers and I think we might actually be, um, we might be standing up a de like a third party dev shop in Monterey, Mexico. Uh, yeah, listen, hey, if you can go do some visiting in Monterey, I think you're gonna have a great time, right? Um, so now I want to, I, my ideal situation is to, to, to take your answer and transition that into a pain question to un uncover where your pain is, right? right. The, the secret to really good pain questions. So I could say, okay, as you, as you think about growing that team, what are you yeah. worried about? You know, what keeps you up at night? That's a shit question. Nobody wants to answer it. Every, every sales bullshit detector I have in the system is going off now, right? <laughs> So the, se <laughs> the secret word, and again, I take no credit for any of this much smarter people than me figure this all out. Um, the secret word is process. So instead mm. of saying what's your pain, I'll say, as you grow the team and you think about, um, you know, scaling up the project management side of things, what's your process for making sure that your time isn't spent there and instead it's spent on development? Right. And I'm going right. to get one or two answers. I'm going to get like, a, oh, we got it. Right. Like it's locked. Like boom, 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 boom. And it's like, okay, no pain there. Run away. Right. Or I'm going to get yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. oh, that's kind of shitty. Yeah. Really? <laughs> right. Like, right. well, there's this, you know, a ticket gets created. It goes into the Slack channel that people ignore, you know, and then some business units are because it's like mad and like comes in, and yells at someone. And then that goes into another Slack channel. And um, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely not a capital P process. That's for sure. <laughs> Uh, listen, if we have capital P processes for everything we do, I'd be, my team would be doing a lot better. Um, yeah. So if you, if, you know, so again, I want to mirror here. So I'd say something like, you know, um, but I, but I'm now like I've, 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 so there's 
there's a problem of something that's not working correctly, right? Or it's not yep. working the way you want it to. You can just tell by the way that the person is speaking. I now yep. want to act and ask an impact question. There's a couple different ways to do this, but like ideally I want to, I want to tie it. I want to, I don't want to lead the horse over to water. So yep. I would say something along the Too lines much. of, yeah, I would say something along the lines of like that capital, that lack of capital P process. So I'm mirroring back to you yep. now so that you know, I heard you, right? Oh, so like yeah, that lack of capital P process, mm -hmm. um, how does that affect your ability to ship on time? Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and now I need to know, like, one of the things that we, we try to do with the team is like, we work backwards from what's the impact we expect. Right. Exactly. So you want to make sure that the questions are leading to a point, like you don't want the sales rep guessing at the time. Right. So, but the point it's like is throwing darts. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's Hey guys, like we're trying to drive to this over here. We're trying yep. to get to Atlanta. Like what are the, the steps along the way here, right? <laughs> right. Make sure you drive through Kansas City, etc. Um, yeah. Stop at Joe's Barbecue. Unbelievable burnt ends. If you ever find yourself in Kansas City, <laughs> I had never been in Kansas City until about three weeks ago. And there, it's awesome. Um, yeah. But so, so you're, the reps you're, know where they're going. You you lead them up to this impact question, and and you you've got to give them an opportunity to sort of self quantify, right? So it's like, how does that impact your 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 speed of of turning things out? How does that impact your developer happiness? Like whatever it is, yep. right? And then if there's something there, then, and this is like, this is a part I cannot stress enough when selling to development teams is yep. if there's something there, the thing that we all want to do as salespeople is we want to like word vomit help. We're like, oh my God, we can help. Like we solve that's that. what we do. We so Our we product does that. that, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, stop, so, stop selling. This is not the selling time. This is not the selling time. Bite your tongue. Well, but the, the thing is, it, it is the selling time. Or sorry, it's not the pitching it's, time. It's the storytelling time, right? And so right, what right. we're really trying to do is mm. get the team to tell, that go, they, you know, the, the, the way this, there's a very simplified hero's journey where basically what you say is you say, oh my gosh, that reminds me of Reminds me of Mary. this other customer. Exactly, right? So like Mary at Unity uh, who had a similar problem, da 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 She very changed her processes. She brought in a new tool, da 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 da, -da crushed it. Is that interesting to you, right? And then they're either saying, yeah, that's super interesting or what you often find when you're telling a story, again, I can't, this is one of my favorites. When you tell a story and the answer is no, it's almost always with no, but because their situation is different and then they're starting to tell, like you get so much more information from them basically. Right, it's it's like, oh, that's funny. What's the, I'm, I'm sure Jocko has a really interesting phrase for that, but it's almost like, it's like an, it's like a story invoked disco question where they're like, you yeah. tell a story and it's like, like, does that sound interesting to you? Like, well, that's cool about Mary. And I, I really like that. And, and I actually think my, my friend Bob has more of Mary's situation. My situation is more about this. Yep. And then like, essentially what they just did is like, it's like, they're reacting to the story as if it was a disco question. And then they like redirect, but, but it's still like kind of focused on pain. So but, but what we find is that storytelling is really key to, for the developer community, right? Because it's like, mm -hmm. for, if we That's went into pitch mode, they, every sensor they have would go off, right? And so instead, we tell them a story and it's not intended to disarm them, right? It's intended to be like, here's a relevant example. Is that relevant to you? And it's just, a, it's an approachable way to have that mm -hmm. conversation. This is something that like, um, so one of our, our reps over here, a gentleman named Sean Cardenas is... Um, is is like oh actually you you he's in my him. inbox <laughs> yeah he's uh <laughs> he's he's absolutely delightful and one of the things this is one of the things that we really harp on in our in our uh, sales organization is that we are all the product managers of our of our sales motion and so what I um you know what I invite for the AE team is is to look do like kind of variations at the edges optimizations at the edges because sometimes things will work out better and then we can like you know re-centralize that into like we can we can merge to master, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yep. And then and then have all the A's doing that. And this is actually a pretty key value proposition of Atrium is because like in addition to being able to instrument your you know your sales organization or what have you, it also allows you to see um, and kind of get ahead of people who are like having problems. And it also can kind of show you like what the secret of somebody's success might be. Like why is this person's ASP so much higher? Why are their conversion rates out of you know to to lit up data so much higher? And so one of the things that Sean did is he refactored the the sales deck that we have um that we use in disco like we do disco like it's conversation based and we're like okay well like maybe let me show you a little bit of like how we approach things at atrium and so we kind of had because like i'm a product marketer by background of course like i had too many slides and um and so sean was like Thanks. what sean did was he pulled up um like our customer like our logo list and in order to be like to give a little bit of an elevator pitch and then stop there and be like 
you know, based on what you said earlier, Connor, that really reminds me of an organization, da 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 da, right? And you know, they had a similar challenge. They did da 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 da, and then like this is what 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 came out of it. Um, does that does that resonate? Oh man, yeah, it certainly does. And then like, at that point, what we're able to do is be like, cool. Well, actually, what we should do right now is we should just set up an Atrium account for you. Uh, it takes like ninety seconds, and you want to just go ahead and share your screen. And then at that point, they can either be like, oh yeah, I would love to do that, or oh, maybe actually I want to learn a little bit more. And so now the AE, it's like a read option situation, yep. yeah. right? And so like the- it's a good analogy. Now, now the AE, it's like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm all about read options. Um, and then what the AE can then do is like, oh, okay, like let's dig into that a little bit more. And then they can keep trial closing along the way yeah, yeah, as yeah, they yeah, go yeah. in order to, but, but I think the thing that's really fascinating there is that like, it's almost like because the, the um, engineers have like such mega bullshit detectors or mega sales detectors or sales allergy, it really raises how it raises like how excellent the the like the presentation has to be. Um, how do you enforce that on your team? Well, because, like it's hard as an AE. You're like, oh, let me feature dump. <laughs> yeah. So what's interesting is I actually think. I actually think the bar is, is, is almost low. I think a lot of the people that are selling into the space are exceptionally bad. Ah. Um, and even by being a, like, I, I'm just, like I, we had a customer the other day who was like, Holy cow. Like y'all should be our sales team. Y'all are amazing at this. And I had like a page and a half of notes of everything we'd done wrong on the call. Um, and so I was just like, it was one of those moments where I was like, you're not taking the notes. What, you, what, are, you, what are you talking? And then, and then the then the prospect is like, "Oh man, we had this like call with Circle CI the other day." I I I don't know anybody at the Circle CI <laughs> sales organization, so please don't. I'm just like pulling one out of my ear. It's like, "Oh man, we just had this like call with like this API company the other day, and like, ooh, doggy, it was terrible, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, interesting. So, so because it, so, so, so you're saying that like there. you guys are really tall midgets. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> First of all, my one of my sales guys is six five, so he's just a really tall, tall. Um, but like, I mean, we listen. We have a long way to get better, right? Like that's mm -hmm. the name of the game, right? Like we when we when we go looking for reps to add to the team, when we go looking to hire folks. I mean, there are only a handful of things that are non negotiable for us. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the three things that's non negotiable is that not only do you should you be coachable, like co being coachable, being coached to be like a core element of who you are you should literally you just strive to get better seek 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 feedback yeah as a, exactly exactly and not so just, and not just not bridle against it but seek right. it we yeah we have this like little like five level scale of like and like five is like you you crave it right you like uh -huh. literally get off the call and you're like gong it to your manager and be like go go to like seven minutes in i i could i want to get better at that section like what, what did i do right what did i do wrong mm -hmm. um so we, we try to bring that into our culture. That's like an element of what we try to think about when we hire. And so as a result, like, sure, we're good at things, but I also think that there's not a person on the team that couldn't list out five things that they want to get better at. Um, and I think that's an element of like what we try to strive for as an organization is just like, yeah, maybe we are tall midgets, but like for now, and ideally in six, 12, nine months, we're just tall talls. Um, and we're just like good at the thing. But I think, yeah, I think it just takes it's time and practice and, and a commitment to uh, uh, continued improvement. Yeah. So let's talk about like PLG movements here, because I think it's kind of related to like how the, the how those those sales conversations go. Um, so maybe you can can you describe a little bit of like how um, like how someone sets up a shortcut instance and then how it kind of like turns into a sales conversation so our our motion is still relatively immature today um we, we we're we know where we want to go but there's still some work to be done um every i mean with, there are a handful of people who raise their hand and ask for a demo but the vast majority of our customers come to us they sign up for a free trial um mm -hmm. it's basically like every every cta every part of the website is all about the trial right um not only is there a trial, but there's also like a free version for up to 10 users, basically. So the vast majority of folks find their way into the sales ecosystem because they wanted to touch and try the product at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've 
historically done is we've been pretty reasonable with outreach and offered ourselves up as product experts and there to support their evaluation period. Um, and so a lot of what we were getting were people who, and this is pretty common, had some light technical question that they wanted mm -hmm. to talk to someone about. And it's not a technical question like, you know, how many API requests can I ship in a 10 minute window? It's usually something around, you know, like, hey, I'm familiar with using Jira. I don't understand how this one thing works here. Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd love to know, I see you have projects and teams, like how do we use teams versus projects or, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, and that's our, that's like our in, that's how we get our, our foot in the door to a certain extent. Um, what we're, what we're shifting now is um, we've brought on a couple of different tools. I feel like I should, should give shout outs when things are good. So um, we're a pretty happy customer of Mad Kudu and we've been working pretty closely with a very early stage server called Endgame, um, mm -hmm. both of which are designed to help us do two things, kind of really one thing, which is like identify the leads that we want to spend our time with. Yep. Um, and so we're really trying to break our lead group into basically one of four buckets, right? Like yep. folks that are never going anywhere and like, no matter what we do, it's not going to happen. Um, folks that- we, like, we spend all of our resources on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. I, mean, I think we do spend a fair amount of our resources on that. But, <laughs> we're trying um, to get out of that business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, folks that are, that, that are great, look like great fits, like we think should be successful, but their early engagement is quite low. And so how do we use sales? How do we use humans to sort of increase that engagement, um, you know, get them to a place where we can sort of move them forward exactly. Yep. Um, then we're looking at folks that are, you know, really highly active, but maybe not the best fit. Those are folks we want to sort of like quickly and help get to a credit card situation, right? How do we help right, you right. get yourself into a purchase decision? Like a, we, and then, got a Harry, we got a Harry Potter situation going on here. We got to sort these people. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then finally, the last group is folks that like have really good looking fit and have lots of intent and now our job is to go figure out like, is this a one team thing, a 10 team thing? Yeah. You know, like exactly. how do we make that, how do we make that onboarding like as smooth as possible? You know, I mean, one of the things we see, so shortcuts really interesting, right? We are mm -hmm. a lot like PLG and in some cases we're, we're not. And and in this yeah. case, I say shortcuts a multiplayer video game. You you can't use shortcut or Jira as like three engineers on a team of yeah. fifty. It's it's like, not like it's not like scratch pad where like mm -hmm. some like one person could just be like, hey, I'm gonna like play around with this and like I'm way better at notes now or whatever. It's just like like yeah, you can, it's like having you can't have like one person using Workday. <laughs> like yeah. <no. laughs> so so what so like our job then becomes about <laughs> making sure that that customer goes from a, a squad or two to all 10 very, very quickly, basically, right? Like how do we make that Expansion. process as easy, as easy as it can be for everyone involved kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. The, the thing, did I share this with you? The um, article I wrote on layering a sales team onto um, a self-serve um here let me go ahead and chat this i'm sure here. you did and i'm sure i sent it to the trash can immediately and didn't do it yeah <laughs> well this is like this is the next book i want to write is on is on this topic and i unfortunately i haven't like i have a software company so unfortunately i don't get to like write it um but it's kind of related topics where it, so um there's this the the woman who leads sales at Dooley is a is a woman named michelle pietch I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. She was an early sales leader at Datadog. And so I think one of the things that people don't consider as much as they should is like OpenView Ventures has done this really amazing job of like branding the shit out of like PLG or whatever. But it's like, what does that even mean? And people are like, I don't know. It's like a way of life, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> PLG, PLG. Like, what do you mean? And and I think like differentiating between something where it's like, yeah, this is like Dropbox or like it's you know something where someone can just like use it themselves um versus like a sales assist motion like datadog or like use atrium as an example right yeah like you you can't self-serve atrium like you can self set up an account right but like our product isn't at the point yet where you can just like get in there and like you know turn it all on and like nerd out and whatever and in part that's because our audience is like sales managers who are not necessarily sales operations people or sales development people who are not necessarily sales operations people and part of that is that we just have a lot more work to do Sure. when it comes to um, product development. And, and this is where kind of like cool products like Reprise and like, you know, some of these like um, these solutions like Toriel or whatever can kind of like help 
give like a product like experience before your yep. full PLG. I think the other thing that people don't consider though is that like there is opportunity for a human to be involved. And I really like the way that you frame that. We're like, hey, here's an organization that's going to be a really good fit because like we can qualify them based on how many engineers they have. So we're like, okay, this is a juicy ass account right here. Uh oh, for whatever reason, they didn't catch fire with Shortcut. Right. That's okay. Let's go Honey Badger them. Right. Well, this is where, like, I'll give, I will give credit. I, the, the, the CEO of Endgame is in my inbox and I keep beating him up over features that he, we need in order to actually use the product as effectively <laughs> as we want it to. But one thing that they do a really cool you job a, of. You have opinions? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a few. <laughs> uh, one thing they do a really cool job of, and I'll give them a lot of credit for, is like, so the way our sales motion worked for the longest time was that the person, so again, shortcut, multiplayer video game, right? You, yeah, yeah. Once you sign up, right? You want three other engineers on your team to get involved in like, you know, kind of do some things, right? Like it doesn't work if it's just you. So what we were always doing from a sales perspective is you signed up. So we were trying yep. to get in touch with you and you yep. were our world, right? And yep. there were other people in the, in the backend database, but like we weren't doing anything with that and we didn't really know yep. much to do it. What Endgame yep. is doing, and I give them a lot of credit for this, they're taking our segment data and then they'll come back to us and say, Hey, Pete signed up, but like Jennifer is the power user. Like she's inviting all the other people. She's writing all the stories. Like that's who you should be getting in touch with. And just yesterday I was talking to Jerry, one of our sales reps and he's like, oh yeah, I got, I got into an account that I wasn't able to get into because I literally just changed the person. And I'm now talking to a person who's like using this and trying to evaluate it for the team. And I was like, yes, like that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Right? Like, yeah. So that, that right. is, so, like, so it's, it's, you, it's like, it's right. So in this case, just to make sure I'm, I'm kind of following, it's like, yeah, you can have a situation where someone can sign up and like, maybe they're not at the usage levels or maybe there are good usage levels, but like that person that you're trying to engage with is not engaging back with you. And yep. then it's kind of like, okay, cool. Well, like, oh, okay. Close loss. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> it's like, no, no, no. Like, who are we going to go? Who are we going to go around to? And so I think the really interesting thing that you're talking about um who's the ceo of endgame alex i want to say it's God, alex my, my, yeah my yeah it just turned off um i gotta be fabulous for you um yeah it's just like hey because i think what can it can sometimes be spicy in a situation like that like use us as an example right like when somebody signs up in atrium we have access to the entire salesforce like user table right, <laughs> so right. like we can talk to anyone really and it's kind of but but then it kind of creates a situation like oh you don't want to mess up the sale like right. what are the what are the intricacies associated with it like oh okay i'm gonna go over your head oh right like all that sort of crap right but i think what's really fascinating with what you're talking about is like it's a it's kind of like winning by design permission like base where it's like this person is doing a bunch of user stories or whatever clearly they will be receptive to right. someone showing up in their inbox with like a shortcut email address. I, I think, I think the reality is like, if we just decided to try to outreach to everyone who had signed up in the system, somebody would be able, you know, you, we've all gotten that email. That's like, did anybody else get this email? And it goes into Slack and then everyone's like, I got an email from that jackass, right? Like, yeah, spam, oh, no. market spam, market spam. Right. Fuck and so, that guy, Pete Kazanji, exactly. he's the worst. Yeah. Oh, get out of here. And so instead of that, like, it's more just like, Based on, you know, the thing that I think is like the really big mind shift shift for me coming from, uh, you know, data storage and Clearbit, et cetera, is that like mm. we are using so much more product information to drive and usage data to drive where we spend our effort and energy. And these new tools are about raising that to make it easy for the sales team to go do that, basically. Now, the trick with all of this is, and this has been, I'm an engineer turned sales guy. So in some ways this is perfect for me. But the other side of this is like, to be good at PLG, you need to have an incredibly strong data organization and team. And you know, even for us effort. as a PLG yeah. company, like we're still figuring that out a little bit, right? I know. Like the it's, list of things we want to answers to and the list of things we have answers to are, you know, hundred X kind of. Yeah, um, that is, that is really tough. I think in a, in a PLG, God, I hate that phrase in a, in a sales assisted, or I don't know, that means, but like in, in an environment like that, not only do you then have to have like way tighter linkages yeah. between product and sales. Cause it's like, Oh, I need the ability to do this, right? Like use Atrium as an example. I was having this really delightful conversation earlier where we we're talking about optimizing, like, you know, driving to a transaction. And we're talking about like how we could package in a way that lowers the initial transaction costs without like giving away all the upside. And we we're kind of talking about like, Oh, well, like, you know, what if you could like, uh, you know, fuzz out the, the, you know, after four tiles in the dashboard or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's a really good idea. And I, all I'm thinking about in the back of my mind is like engineering expense, engineering expense, engineering expense, right? 
Um, so I think you have to have a lot more linkages, tighter linkage. But I think the the cool thing is that there's a lot of like interesting products that can kind of help you with that. Like one um, one of the things that we use in our organization is a company called Census. Yeah. Um, to use um, to pipe usage data into uh, contact objects on on Salesforce, and one thing that's so, kind of wait, rad wait, about that. Of, speaking of PLG, so their biggest competitors is company High Touch, right? Uh -huh. So we use High Touch. You want to know why we use High Touch? High Touch made one uh, one data point free, and uh -huh. so my head of RevOps was like, "Well, I can use High Touch for free to Salesforce." Well, I mean, within a month, we had three other data points, and all of a sudden, we were paying for the thing. But I was like, the the moment I saw that, I was like, "That's going to be standard for the space in sixty days," because like it's such yeah. a good thing to be like, "Yeah, we'll give Again. you tons of value with a with a reasonable cap." Uh, anyway, similar yeah. since it's High Touch, same stuff, right? Like, yeah, yeah. So they um, here, like, actually, let me drop this in the chat. It's this guy. Um, so. Um, yeah so so what we and one thing that's like we're because like i don't have a big data organization <laughs> i don't we don't have a data Makes organization yeah i know exactly but and like my sequel is like <laughs> uh, um Makes two of us. <laughs> yeah and um but, but one of the things that i really love and i think this is actually a really great insight for like SaaS companies in general when you're early on is you can do like man behind man or woman behind the curtain behaviors so like census as an example i probably have about like 30 data points that are on like the contact object um at this point because <clears throat> i've just worked with my csm to extend the to extend the model and then extend the model and extend the model and extend the model and we have all sorts of insane stuff on that contact object like any of my reps can go on a contact object and see like you know how many unique um views a, a a prospect has looked at in the last like 30 days they can see you know are they dashboard views are they alert feed views are they op views how many emails yep. are sending to them what the opens are all that sort of jazz um and that's just been something that like has accreted over time and that my csm as at census has been amazing in helping me extend that out and I think you could make the argument like, oh, well, like that should be like way easier. They should have like a WYSIWYG or something on the front end of census such that like a goofball like Pete can do that. It's like, yeah, that's a lot of engineering expense and they'll probably get there eventually. But in the short yep. term, maybe what you can do is you can you know, use some human to kind of like smooth over that, right? Well, and, also and then you, get I mean, someone embedded. It gives you a reason, it gives your CSMs a, re like a reason to engage. And add value, which is kind of like what you were talking about with like the refs. It's like it's almost and actually one of my favorite articles. Um, this guy David Scott wrote this on um, on JBoss. I like I probably quote this thing like <laughs> like once a month. Um, one of the things that JBoss did early on. So David Scott, you know, amazing like yeah. thinker and author on on go to market. Um, uh, at Matrix Partners, and um, and so one of the when he was an investor at JBoss, one of the things he talked about was um, they actually took the the documents used to be um, people could buy them, right for for, for JBoss, and so what they did was they they stopped buying them or they they took away that revenue, and they put them behind like a lead gen capture, right to provide a mechanism by which, and so the funny, you were talking about this earlier where someone's like, oh, I need to figure out how to do the XYZ integration and shortcut. So now they have to talk to someone, right? It's almost like you have to like engineer those like dead ends or they're not like dead ends. It's like a talk to us end, right? We did, I mean, we thunk like, some of how I think about this stuff comes from, um... Rich Carlton is famous for doing a study that says customers don't dislike you when they have a bad experience. Customers who have a bad experience um, are at an inflection point and they either become brand advocates or brand detractors based on your reaction to that. Um, and so I'm sure there may very well be a shortcut customer in the, in the, in the in listening who's going to get mad at me. But one of my favorite things we did was we did some changes to pricing and packaging and one of the things was we got annual customer, customers would sign up for annual. And then two months later say, whoops, we shouldn't be on annual. Now we could do one of two things. We could be a dick and be like, sign up for annual, like you're shit out of luck. Or we could do be that. kind and put them, you know, figure out how to put them back on monthly. What I told this support team was, I said, make sure you say no first. Make sure you say no, because then a certain percentage of customers are going to go, okay, no worries. But a bunch right. of customers are going to come back and be like, fuck, this sucks. Like, can you help me out? 
And then I've already pre-approved, go do it. But now you're the hero for that customer, yeah. as opposed to like, sure, we'll do that for you. You've made the thing you've given them now in like not valuable. You've told the customer it wasn't valuable. It was so easy to do, so free to change. And so by interjecting yeah. just a little bit of friction, we've demonstrated for the customer that there is value and then made the team look great because they look like they're going over and above to support the customer, basically. It's a little bit of gamesmanship, but like, you know, I think I'll, I'm okay with yeah. knowing that we're... Yeah, so I think there's some interesting questions there is like how you can <clears throat> introduce that into your, maybe introduce that into your product in a way where it's like, it's not like, it's not dead ends, but it's like a little bit of friction there where someone can like then raise their hand and be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, like now you have to talk to sales, yep. right? Or or like, oh, okay, well, like, let me go talk to my boss. And, and then I go and I get a glass of water and I come back and I'm just like, yeah, I really, I really <laughs> it's the car, It's the car salesman who's got to run upstairs and talk to the boss. <laughs> yeah, right, upstairs, exactly. you know, looking at Looking at internet memes and then coming down. Yeah. Like, All right, we'll do it. Like, yeah. Um, there was a, there, there which was a, point which points out there is a dark pattern. You can take this stuff too far. So like, let's not subscribe to that, right? Like, I'm not. We're not trying to be car salespeople by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. The um, I think so. Jess had an interesting question about this. Is you were talking about kind of this? Um, well, we're kind of talking about the friction points where somebody has like a lightweight technical question, and then that's the point at which they engage with sales. Um, Jessica asked a question about like who's the role that's answering those questions like what's the type of human um what's the profile what do they do like is that an is that essentially an inbound sdr or is that a product well so for, for us we don't have sdrs yet because the price point doesn't make sense to have a two-stage sales cycle right like the primary reason for in my experience the primary reason for having an sdr is that aes are too expensive to run all the steps in the sales cycle right but at our mm -hmm. price point just the handoff and the touch points don't make a lot of sense um it's our right now. What it is, frankly, is it's our it's our really early sales reps who have just a ton of product knowledge under their belt. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's going to happen, um, and one of the things I did when I joined Shortcut, I, I like I had a conversation with my boss, and I was like, "Just so you know, this is a PLG company, and I'm not a PLG expert." And he was like, "Yeah, we knew that when we hired you." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I just want to be super clear about that." So I kind of did a roadshow and interviewed, you know, everybody I could get my hands on. Right, like I was lucky enough to talk to. Uh, Kyle at Figma and Sam at Loom and uh, Zenia at Miro, like we, all these very smart people because of, you know, connections in the network were willing to spend time with us. Um, and one thing yep. that I heard a couple of times come back was like, it's not uncommon to have a sales org that's like a trial support org yes. that's going to be more technical, more enablement focused. Like they're not trying to close the deal. They're just trying Product to get you to specialist. do these things. Yeah, exactly. They're just there to get you to do the things that's going to make it easy to buy. And then we've been referring to these folks. So we have, you know, we're silly. We have um, self-service Steve and White Glove Wendy. And so yep. we try to, you know, when we try to engage with customers early, we try to figure out, is it self-service Steve? We just got to get Steve what he needs to get off and running. Or is it White Glove Wendy? We want to help her like build out what the evaluation process looks like and, and how many people are going to yep. be involved and how many squads and how long, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yep. um, I, I think the team will, I think the team right now is doing it live, but I think eventually it's very likely that we'll have two teams there. Yeah, I remember, so like, <laughs> all everything that like were so by the way when you told those your your boss like i'm not a plg expert like there are none <laughs> it's too early um that being said the pl the place where this kind of exists all these existing patterns kind of come from is from <clears throat> um like open source sales technology sales it's a, a not part not technology sale but like the, the oss business model like like jboss etc and yep. i remember um when i was doing my initial research for atrium i was lucky enough to talk to the head of sales for uh xamarin it was in 2016 yep. um this is actually was one of the one this is one of the things that inspired the um, the creation of MSP is I, I did about 150 customer interviews and I got to talk to all these like really great sales leaders and sales operations people. And I, again, a read option. If, if, if somebody was like really great, I'd be like, cool. Can you recommend three other people? And I would like yeah, yeah, yeah. my way through great people. And if someone was kind of like a, like a goober, I'd be like, Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is, and so what, this... you just worm your way through really great folks. And so, I forget how I got introduced to Stephanie Schatz, uh, who's now Stephanie Friedman. Um, she's the head of sales at, at Xamarin. And the Xamarin uh, sales operations function was like amazing as well. There's a woman named uh, Arwa Kadura that that ran sales ops there. And then um, 
oh god what's david's last name david hong who's over at gem now just like all these great folks oh he was at uh checker for a hot second but you see these great folks who really have their act together and so xamarin had a similar situation where like it was like a cross-platform development thing, like mobile development thing. Like you'd have these developers downloading the SDK, like they don't want to talk to a sales rep, but they would like run into a, a thing. And so they had all these SDRs, but they called them like product associates or whatever. And literally yep. it was just like, they would email the person and be like, hey, I saw you downloaded this. I'm here if you need anything. Yep. Uh, here, like here's the support documents. And like literally they're just opening a line of communication, but it wasn't like, do you want to get on a demo? Do you want to yeah, get on a yeah. demo? <laughs> And and they had like they had like thirty of these kids in um, in San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. And and so like I I think that that's a pattern. It's like a way more technical, SD like inbound product yeah, yeah. SDR. Well, they're and also they're probably their comp structure is different, right? Like there's you you want to incentivize them to get the customer to do the right thing more than I mean there's um you, you know who else yeah, exactly. did this well was um oh. I'm drawing a blank now, but like there, there are a lot of companies now that have done some version of this. I mean, I think that the other thing that's interesting about PLG is like, there's a scale, right? So like there's exactly. the Dropbox model or the Figma model, which is like one user gets value. You sell to the team, you sell to IT. Well, we're like PLG, but we also like, you know, one user becomes 50 very quickly. And so it looks a little yep. bit more like traditional SaaS in some ways. So I think that, yep. you know, the reason, one of the big reasons I wanted to do this was I said, I think the future of sales is going to look like this. I think people want to try it. They want to touch it. We're going to design yep. things so that people can get value from it quickly. Like that's what, let, let's, let's get good at that version of the world in sales. Cause that may very yep. well be what the world looks like in the next 20, 30 years. But, but there's still, there's still a super, super, super important role for the seller which is like initial successing, which is kind of like what we're talking about. Is like yeah, this is like this like SDR CSA. So so thing. one of the things that and then a what, like I'm an engineer, a transaction I'm an engineer by training. Later on, I get I get worried that I got worried that I was going to show up, we'd run all the data, and sales wouldn't matter. I was like, uh oh, uh oh, what if I get there and it's so PLG that adding humans to the situation doesn't matter? And so when I went on this roadshow and talked to all these people, um. It wasn't Kevin. Um, there's a couple of folks at Product Board that were really helpful and smart, but there yeah. were a couple of folks along the way, including Product Board, that said unequivocally that they run every A/B test they could get their hands on, and every time a human was involved, the results were better. And yeah. it, like they had to figure it out. It didn't come on day one. It was like trial and error. But like every single time, humans would increase the rate, increase the ACV, ex accelerate the sales cycle, you know, increase retention, whatever it was. And so the question in a PLG world or in a lower price point world, our job becomes how do we allocate effective resources to make yep. the most of the people and capabilities that we have, not just build a giant sales team because that's what we used to do in the past. And it was very like input output kind of thing. Yeah, totally. And I think that that's something in that that article um, from Lenny's newsletter that I dropped in there is like it had like the metrics have to pencil out or it's like, OK, cool. Yep. This person costs like, you know. Seventy thousand dollars a year, or, and they can have these many touches, and then they raise the win rate by this, and da da da, and like, oh, it pencils out. Oh no, it doesn't pencil out. Okay, I guess maybe we need to do this in like Lahore, Pakistan, or like the yeah. Philippines. I was gonna say, oh. Dropbox was famous for this. They figured out that uh, in a lot of cases humans were great, but the humans were too expensive. So then they would yeah. try to figure out how to just make the humans cheaper and and look for ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think well, the the challenge with Dropbox as as you know, you can kind of talk to a lot of the early sales leaders there um, is that there was a little bit of like cultural misalignment where it was kind of like, yeah, no, we're going to engineer this, right? We're going to engineer this out of existence. Which yeah. is, the funny thing about that is like, but should you, right? I, I think um, I think that that's changed. I think 10 years ago, I agree. when Dropbox which was taken great. off, that was the mental model of every founder that could come up with it, right? I, I, think, I think founders it, yeah. recognize, and, and VCs in particular are also guiding them now to be like, that's not the model. Like, don't fight the sales org. The sales org yeah, is going like, to make let's, you let's really spend, good. Let, let's spend our engineering effort on like other things. And then we can like smear some human on the front end there in order to take off the rough edges. I, I would think that probably the main reason why though is because everybody has read my book. And so as a result, they're now... <laughs> I thought you'd like that, Connor. Um, I do, I do the, like that. I do like that. <laughs> Although if we're going to no. plug books, I'm always going to plug Jeremy Donovan's because that is the best sales book I've ever read. No offense, Pete. Oh, Leading Sales Development? It's very good. Yeah. Do I have it? Yeah. I think I have it right here. 
I got it like some somewhere around here. It's on my uh, it's on my desk. Yes, it it's is on, it's good. definitely in the it's definitely in the atrium goodie bag of. We just bought a bunch of books. Do you want one? We'll send them to you. My favorite outbound campaign of all time. We have a lot of those. Um, I'm sure. But yeah, I think that that has, yeah, people have gotten around that. But I think the staffing models haven't kind of like dialed in yet because you can totally imagine what this looks like, especially um, like, especially like think about with things like reprise, right? Or like, um, you know, or like Toriel or whatever. You could imagine like creating a faux product on the front end yeah. that allows for interaction and whatever. Yeah. And then some sort of like, thing where it's like do you want to do you want to ask some questions about this i mean even like a cta of like take a demo someone's like <laughs> right but it's like yeah. would you like to learn more about this or kind of like learn more about the integrations and maybe that goes to like an email conversation with one of those um one of those junior those junior product sellers or whatever yep. and then later on like hey cool we're here great i'm i'm cha i'm championed i like i'm a, i'm champ tested and i'm on like we're i'm on your side of the table now but now help me go do battle with like the v vp of engineering or the cfo or whatever and like expecting like the user to do that <laughs> like good luck you're not gonna have successful win rates like i like someone's gonna show up and like be like oh look at this like gorilla it here let's uh <laughs> let's extinguish that and uh <laughs> and uh and congratulations you just ate some churn nice um i think that's like a thing where we're yeah it's like um I, I actually this is a winning by design thing right um like helping people buy yeah yeah like for, i mean i don't like, know like helping, used to say helping that to me helping all the helping yeah. people to buy people love to buy they hate to be sold right like right just make sure you have something that you want and then be there to help them buy like yeah it's a mindset shift right like but yeah jocko used to yell that at me all the time when i was trying to sell things <laughs> i love it sorry but it's like but that's what i do that's what we're supposed to do uh, not exactly i actually had just do. had uh just had drinks with a guy uh that no one i mean unless you're in atlanta you would never heard of a guy named mark miles uh he's like secret genius in startups that that when atlanta was small and nobody thought of anything of atlanta um <laughs> I, i'll never forget mark was my first sales mentor i was like i feel like a schmuck selling things and mark was like we'll stop trying to sell things and i was like then we're not gonna be very successful and he said no you need to get really good at figuring out who gets a lot of value from what you do and finding a lot of them and helping them buy your product and that for me was like a dramatic change in moment for me of like oh i can do that i, I can get behind that that feels like a thing that's a good use of time and energy um, so shout out to a guy who was early in my formative years. I love it. Yeah. Another UVA guy too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> His wife nice. was my boss at Bain is what happened. And she was brilliant. <laughs> and it turned out her husband was brilliant at startups. And I was like, oh, this is a good pairing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, killer. Well, um, I think we're almost out of, uh, we're almost out of time here, but are there any kind of like, uh, parting shots that you'd love to cover before we, uh, before you wrap up here, are you guys hiring on the sales team? Anything like that? Yeah. Hiring sales operations, yeah. sales leadership. Uh, we've <laughs> got to make a change this is, at the CRO this is a level. Silly question. How much time do we have? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're, I'm actually, we're, uh, we're in relatively late stages with a couple of sales leaders. So we're hoping to close it up soon. We've nice. probably got four or five recs open on the sales team at the moment. Um, cool. I've got four sales or four CS recs open and a head of CS rec open. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're, we're doing a little bit of hiring uh, to, to say just a bit, just a bit. Um, nice. But you know, the benefit is you get to come work with like little old yappy me. And yep. instead of the downside is I actually get to tell you what to do as opposed to just being a talking head on some Zoom yeah. call. <laughs> Uh, amazing. Well, I think that, uh, you know, folks could do a lot worse than to, to, to work with you because obviously you really heavily think, think very deeply and like or in an organized fashion, very like process oriented about like sales innovation and sales excellence. And, um, and like, I know this from my friends who work at, who work at Clearbit. Um, so, um, Wonderful. Connor, thank you very much. Um, next week we've got on, on power hour, we've got speaking of PLG, we've got Marissa Fuhrer. Um, she's a enterprise sales leader at, uh, at Figma. She's absolutely fantastic. She's, uh, you know, she's former Dropbox herself and actually she started her career at Bright Edge. Um, Bright Edge is another one of those kind of like down low, like super savage sales organizations that just like emits amazing, amazing sellers. Um, 
So she's going to be on the she's going to be on Power Hour next week. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, Connor, you have a good uh, good weekend, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming in and uh, answering some questions for us. Always, always fun to do car talk on uh, on on the sales <laughs> topics. Some of my favorite <laughs> to to blather on about. Amazing. Okay, I'll see you. Thank you.